are joined by the Right Honorable Paul Martin. Good morning, sir. Good morning. It's Hello. great to have you here. So you're in town, uh, you were speaking last night at an event uh, honoring the achievements of National Chief of Assembly of First Nations, Phil Fontaine. Who is absolutely a tremendous leader, a Canadian leader. He's certainly an Aboriginal leader, but a Canadian leader, and it was a great event. So um, we're thrilled to have you here, and we thought there's so many things we want to talk to you about, but we wanted to start with the economy and where we're at. Let's look at Canada, the States, and uh, the European Union. If you were still Prime Minister today, would you be doing things differently? Well, I think I would be working a great deal more on the international area. The Canadian economy is doing reasonably well. Perhaps I don't think it's something we should be smug about. Uh, but the international situation is pretty difficult. Well, neither the Europeans nor the Americans, the two most powerful economies uh, in the world, um, in my opinion, are facing up to their issues. No, they're fa not facing up to their deficits. They're not facing up to the ways in which you've got to get growth. And I think that uh, really this is going to be a major problem for all of us. Well, if you're talking about the European Union, and, and are you talking about the fact that the, the citizenry isn't facing up, or the governments aren't facing no, up? No, the governments aren't. The, the real problem is when they formed the Eurozone, essentially, common currency, they didn't put in place the, the kinds of institutions that are going to govern uh, that common currency. You need the same economic institutions to, to have a monetary union, which is what the Eurozone is, than you do to run a country. You have to have a central bank that could be a lender of last resort. You have to have common banking policy. So they have none of this kind of thing, mm -hmm. and they're taking a lifetime to build them. And what's that going to do to us? I mean, recent stats came out, I can't remember the exact number, but the average Canadian is in more debt than they've been in for a long time. The kind of debt that the, the U.S. was in uh, when they started to uh, run into all their Yeah, troubles. Canadian consumers are, are, are over indebted. Um, they say the Americans have dropped their, their debt substantially, individual Americans. It's, that's a bit of a bum rap for Canadians because a lot of that is mortgage default in the United States, which we didn't have here. But we are affected by what goes on in the United States and by what goes on in Europe. And the, the answer to your question is that the Europeans are constantly applying Band-Aids uh, to their problems as opposed to dealing with them. And they're going to eventually have to deal with them. This, of course, is, the ele is an election year south of the border, so I'm not sure whether you're going to see any real hard, let's bite the bullet, uh, you know, policies coming out. It's everyone tries to slide to the middle and then appease. Well, I, I, think, I think you're right, but the election is coming soon, um, and I think there's going to be a huge expectation that whoever the new president, whatever the new Congress is, that they are going to put their financial problems front and center. They haven't done that so far. Um, the problem is there's no indication that they understand that you know their deficit their deficit problems are huge but they've been masked by the fact that the american interest rates don't go up the way they did in spain or italy mm -hmm. because in fact it's a safe haven the world's in trouble everybody buys u.s treasury bills sooner or later that's going to catch up with them and when their interest rates start to take off um, they're going they are going to find that they have left too much time between now and when they should act. Mr. Martin, on a, on, a much right. more, on a much more personal side, you belong to a very exclusive club of world leaders. Do you, uh, after you, you know, you, you're no longer prime minister, do you keep in touch with those, pri do, in, on your cell phone, can you, do you just call up, for, I don't know, former well, president? Yeah. <laughs> oh, sure. The, the people that you got to know well, mm -hmm. um, and you do get to know these people very well, you, yes, you do keep, you do keep in touch. And, um, and obviously when there's been a, when a change, uh, obviously you keep in touch with new people who are in, in office a little bit less, but there's still quite a, quite a network out there. Over the, over the years, if you've been in it long enough, you, you, know, you meet so often internationally that, and you go back to their countries and you make comments like we're doing right here, yeah. and they get all upset, and then you have nice conversations. What do you think about the recent election in Quebec with uh, Pauline Marois and the Parti Québécois coming back into power? We're both from Montreal, yes. and so... We miss you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. <laughs> um, well, I think that one of the, the best things that happened on an election campaign is that the more Pauline Marois brought up the referendum, the more the support for the referendum dropped, and the polls show that. They're really... I think what's very important now is that, that she's obviously going to try to provoke a backlash. Uh, and I think that it's very important that our response be be measured, but be unequivocal. I mean, we don't want a federal government that counts. Canadians just don't have a taste for that, for the separatist language, or for to start even going near that well, again. Well, the, 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 the real fact is that I think most Quebecers don't. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, most Quebecers at the present time want the government to concentrate on the economy the same way other Canadians do. They want it to, to basically deal with the education system and the health care system. But the fact is that this possibility of a backlash is always there. Um, and she's going to try to provoke it, and I think that we've got to handle it very well. Now, we've asked you how you'd fix the economy. How would you fix the Liberal Party? There you go. What's happened? You know, would you have ever have thought that the, the party would end up essentially in tatters the way it has? And who do you think could be the person to bring it back? Well, is, I it, think, is it Justin Trudeau? I, I think that if you take a look at the political, the political scene, you've got, um, in terms of, you've got a very far-right government uh, in office, uh, and I don't think Canadians are there, and I also don't think that the Canadians are going to essentially look to the NDP because you're not going to look to that extreme. We don't want to find ourselves in a situation, for instance, that the Americans are in, where you've got such a polarization uh, that government is uh, can't act. And I think the Liberals do occupy the middle. I think the ground is there as for the us. As the Liberals, or will it have to morph into no, something else? No, as the else? Liberals. As the Liberals. They're, we are the only people who are at the present time who are speaking. Uh, to, to, to basically a middle way. Which, what, and what is that? It's strong social programs, on the other hand, but it's also having a very strong balance sheet, national balance sheet, in order to pay for those programs. That's what we did when we were in office. Our record's pretty clear. And I think that I think that's what's going to eventually carry the party through. Well, what, what is your take of uh, the fact that Canadians have shifted to the right a little bit in terms of, of the people that they're electing in government? Well, I think that Canadians are obviously worried about the overall economic situation. But if you talk to them, they're also worried about, are there going to be schools for their children to go to that are going to be right? Is there going to be a health care system that's going to be strong? Canadians are very strong environmentalists. They understand the long term uh, of that. So I don't think it's a question of shift to the right or to the left. It's a question of balance. And I think that's what governments have to speak to. Do you want back in? You speak so passionately about Canada, about the economy. No, I'm, I'm, you know, spending most of my time either on these international issues that we've talked about, the economy, but most of my time is on the Aboriginal issue in this country. This is the youngest, the fastest growing segment of our population. Um, and you can't just walk away from the most vulnerable and the youngest section of your pop population. And so the event last night that you talked about earlier, th those are the kinds of things that, that really... I, I think that really touched me, and that's where I'm spending all my time, and I'm going to continue. We have to wrap it up, but I have to ask you just before we go, who would you choose to lead the Liberal Party? Uh, I, and I'm not, I, listen, I think there are a lot of good candidates out there, and I think it's up to them uh, to come forth, and nobody needs me to be telling them <laughs> that. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Uh, the Right Honourable Paul Martin, it's a pleasure meeting you and having you here. Great to have, be here. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you.